This is an example problem involving an ESP, and we know things about the flow rate and the particles, and we have to figure out how much area of collecting plates we need, which really will tell us if we know how big the, each plates, plate is, then we can figure out how many plates we need. Here's the problem. Estimate the total collecting surface area of an ESP that can be used to capture lime dust from a kiln. The kiln's exhaust gas has a flow rate of 50,000 SCFM, that's standard cubic feet per minute, or 23.61 cubic meters per second, that's standard, and a temperature of 163 degrees Celsius. The exit mass concentration of dust is 10 grams per cubic meter, and 99% removal efficiency is desired. The particles have typical, typical drift velocities of 1.5 centimeters per second. This problem calls for the Deutsch-Anderson equation, which tells us the efficiency as a function of drift velocity and flow rate and area. Notice that we don't actually need the exit mass concentration um, because the efficiency is 99%, and that's all we really need. First, note that Q is given at standard conditions, and we need it so it's given at standard temperature and pressure, but we need to convert it to actual conditions in the ESP. I can never remember what goes in the numerator and what goes in the denominator, so I always go back to the ideal gas law or to elementary chemistry, where we know that P times V over T at one set of conditions is equal to P times V times T over a, at a second set of conditions. In this case, we're going to assume that P1 is equal to P2. So one here is our standard conditions, two is the actual conditions. Um, you know, in the absence of other information, ESPs are probably usually operated at uh, standard pressure. There's no reason to pressurize it or depressurize it. And so we can cancel out the Ps. Now I'm going to solve for V2, which is equal to V1 times T2 over T1. So that's a volume. Um, if the flow rate Q is just a volume per time. So I can divide everything by time and say that, well, Q2 is equal to Q1 times T2 over T1. Now our temperatures, I'm going to say that 1 is our standard condition, so T1 is equal to 298 Kelvin, T2 is equal to 163 degrees Celsius, and if I add 273 and convert that to Kelvin, it's 436 Kelvin. So now I can say that Q2 is equal to my standard conditions, Q, which is 23.61 cubic meters per second, and I multiply by 436 Kelvin divided by 298 Kelvin, and I get 35.54 cubic meters per second. That's the flow rate I will be using in the Deutsch-Anderson equation. So next up, we apply the Deutsch-Anderson equation. This tells us the collection efficiency of an ESP. It assumes mixed flow in the ESP. And I can take that equation, it's you know, eta is equal to this exponential of some things. I can rearrange it for the area and it's equal to minus Q over W times the natural log of 1 minus eta. And now I substitute in my values. Q, I determined, was 34.54 cubic meters per second. W is the drift velocity that was given to us in the problem of 0 0.015 meters per second. Um, if it's not given to you, you may be told the size of the particles, something about their composition or their um, enough information so that you could figure out what the uh, the value of of p would be in the equation to figure out the drift velocity, and you'd need to know something about the electric field. Uh, so now that's times the natural log of 1 minus the efficiency. We're seeking an efficiency of 99%, so I substitute that in. And now when I solve for this, I have... I get 10,600 square meters. So that's the total area. And if each of my plates is, let's say, 1,000 square meters, I would need 10, at least 10 of them, so I'd need 11 of them.